once is enough, or is it? How many times should you point out a false teacher or a false teaching? How many times should you revisit one particular person or a few people who keep seem to be habitual offenders of what the text of scripture say? How many times is required for us or are we commanded to speak about something? Well, someone would go to uh, Romans 16. Let's go there. Romans 16, 17 saying to mark and avoid, just do it one time. Now, I urge you, brethren, to keep your eye on those who cause dissension and hindrance, contrary to the teaching which you learned and turn away from. Some verses would say to mark and avoid. Now, when we look at this passage, we just read it in the NASB, but if we look at the King James Version, we'll see those terms, mark and avoid. Uh, now, I beseech you, brethren, to mark them which cause divisions, and he says to avoid them. The question is, is this a one-time thing? Well, marking someone and avoiding them does not mean that we don't keep warning about them, that we don't keep... Think about this. Should we mark and avoid a criminal or should you mark, avoid, and keep trying to protect the public from criminal behavior? Well, it's an ongoing thing. And so the marking of them, this is a an ongoing thing, especially until, hopefully until the person stops doing what they're doing that causes divisions contrary to scripture. Nowhere in the text is to say that this is a one-time thing. And so if you bring up something that this particular habitual offender says today, then should you not bring it up again in two weeks if he says something different or in two months or a year later? Well, no, every offense requires, if it's, if it's important enough, it may require a rebuttal to that. Why? Not necessarily for that person's sake, but hopefully that person would see in turn, but for the sake of the flock. The flock needs to know there's a new warning. There's a new health scare. There's a new uh, issue, some new terror warning. There's all these different things, these public safety announcements that come out to warn the public. Why? Because the public needs to be alerted to be safe. The Bible says to a person, this a factious person, says to, and by the way, this word that's used here is a heretic. He says, reject a factious man. The word, the Greek word is heretikon, which is a heretic, after a first and second warning. So he does something, you warn him, does again, you warn him, and then you leave him alone, knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. Does that mean that after you warn him that you don't revisit it? No, you warn him. But what about the public? You keep warning the public. As long as there is a danger, you keep warning the public about the danger. How do we know? So what's the greatest example of this warning of the public about the danger in the body? Well, about Satan, about sin. You warn them, not just once, but it's a constant thing. So we're always to be aware of the fact that the enemy is on the prowl. And sometimes he's on the prowl disguised as a preacher. And so we have to we have to remember the Bible says to contend. This contending is not a one time thing. We constantly contend for the faith that was once for all given to the saints. So do we contend once? No, this is an ongoing thing. That's why the word is used in the infinitive. But then think about this. Second Timothy four, two, he says, preach the word that this preaching is not a one time thing. But preach the word when be ready in season and out of season all of the time. But he says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great Look what it is, great patience and instruction. So it's a constant. You are exhorting them to do so constantly, patiently. Patient necessarily requires the understanding that it's not a one-time thing. You don't need a lot of patience to do something once. You need patience when it's something that's going to take a long time, and you have to constantly do it, continually do it. And he says to do so with teaching. So if there's someone that wants to hear, wants to listen, well, then fine. It's for them. The person that doesn't want to, you warn them once or twice and then you reject that person. If the person should ever come around, extend their hand out, hey, listen, I want to understand, maybe I was wrong. Well, then fine, you deal with that person. Maybe that person is no longer a factious person, but just realizing they were misinformed or had some things wrong. Then we deal with them then. But if they don't want to acquiesce and come around and conform to what the, what the scriptures say, well, then we reject that person. But we're not going to reject the body as though the body doesn't need to be uh, made abreast of what's happening and that they only need to be warned once because what if you give the warning and they didn't hear it they came later which happens there are a lot of unsuspecting people that show up late and hear something for the first time that you may have been stating for the last year or two years think about the prophets of old who how they're going around prophesying saying what god is going to do did they give a one-time prophecy no it was a continual so what should you do when it comes to warning should you mark and avoid uh, and never revisit the issue just one time maybe twice no that is not what we're commanded in scripture remember 
Paul, Peter, James, John, every New Testament writer goes to the stake, goes through the steps of warning about false teachings and false teachers and sometimes naming them. So we are to follow suit and constantly make the people aware of what the dangers are. But also at the same time, you need to also be showing them, teaching them what is true. You don't just spend the time saying what's false, what's wrong, but you necessarily have to speak about what is right. And so be on guard for these false teachers and keep naming them, keep calling them out, keep warning the flock. Why? Because at the end of every heresy, at the end of every false prophecy, at the end of every teaching, there's a soul. And sometimes that soul didn't hear the first warning. Amen. Amen.